Okay. It is on mine. Maybe you maybe you just wanna I don't know if you wanna reload. It is on mine. Maybe you maybe you just wanna I don't know if you wanna reload, but it's it's recording. I see what you did there. Let's let's reload. Oh there you, yeah, let's reload. Did him t- <laughs> um <laughs> That might be the worst joke I've ever come up with. <laughs> hey, that might uh, that might make the uh the opening. That's so that's, it's like one of the hardest parts about the show. What is fine and a funny opening? Well, because look, we've been recording for fifty minutes, so I have to, you know, kind of scrub through our BS conversations to find something. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> luckily, I know exactly what you know. Yeah, what's going to go in the front, um, and and. Sometimes it takes a bit longer. So, so what you're saying, Evan, is that the title of this podcast is going to be Big Sweaty Rave. Big Sweaty Rave. There you go. Let's talk about Big Sweaty Raves. I've been to a few. <laughs> well, we have, we have got the uh, opening story of how Matt was... If, if that was in the recording. I, it's true. Wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if that didn't go public. <laughs> 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 What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 37 of Podcast Reload. It's the general gaming podcast by Sifted.net subscribers, where we invite community guests onto the show to talk about the games industry in all its weird ways. I am your host, Vin Hill, and joining me, as always, is, of course, my co-host and sole Japan dweller, Evan Piotrowski. Hello, everyone. And joining us as well this week is, of course, our community guest, and this week we have Matt, also known as Burkoff. What's going on, guys? Not too much, apart from the fact that we haven't been around for, what, three weeks? That's correct. Um, so the episode, Evan. Evan. the episode hey, that, yeah, it's my, it's my fault. The episode <laughs> that went up last week was actually recorded three weeks ago. Um, I went to Vietnam for a week, and then the That's day after reason. I got back, my brother came to Japan. His first trip in Asia, so I basically was showing him around Japan for the week after that, and then I threw the episode up last week. And yeah, so it's been a long, long time. But uh, yeah, sorry, uh, spring vacation and, and whatnot. But no, it's uh, all good. We'll, playing the we'll old Toro guide. Yeah, we'll be back on a semi regular schedule now. It's it's. Semi-regular. I know it's been semi regular. Yeah, I'm not making any promises. But uh, yeah, <laughs> we're back. We're back. So uh, I'm I'm getting back into my regular work schedule and all and all that stuff. So we'll yeah, be rolling on. Slowly getting there. Slowly getting there. So uh, corrections. Have we got anything from last episode? I didn't. I haven't listened to it. You know, I still haven't. I normally listen to all the episodes, where I didn't do last week's. But did you? Did you guys notice anything weird? No, I don't think so. Nothing cool. stood out as a blatant, a blatant lie. Blatant lie. Because we did actually incorrect. Then. Yep. <laughs> it's all nope. good. Okay. Cool. So uh, moving on, we're not going to be doing Save or Kill because we've actually played that with you before, Matt. Um, yep. I'm just going to dive straight into what we've actually been playing. So, Evan, what have you been playing this week, man? Or over the last three weeks, I should say, like in between being in the wrong country and being tour guide. Yeah, um, done a lot actually. I played probably another ten hours of Zelda. This is weeks and weeks back, and then I just realized, like, I I don't know if I want to do all these shrines. I mean, there's 120 of them. I've done over 50 percent. Had my time with it, 80 80 hours. I think I'm good. Un- until maybe the DLC comes out, if the if the dungeons are are worth the money. You've finished the game though, right? Oh yeah, I finished oh, it. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. beat it. Yeah, it's a it's a great game. Uh, then I went back to Yakuza Six. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Jesus, really? It makes another appearance. Yeah. Well, so I I didn't know if I wanted to start Horizon Zero Dawn um, right away. So I went back to Yakuza Six and uh, looked through the trophies. I was wondering if the game was PP. You're an idiot. And uh, <laughs> it was definitely PP, so I plat- I platinumed Yakuza 6. And then after that, I played Zero Dawn and liked it so much, I also platinumed that game. Yeah, uh, good man. Um, what, what are your overall thoughts of uh, Horizon after all that then? Because I think you hadn't even started it when we were talking about it that episode, right? So Oh, no, with, the, with you, Mitch, right? Right. So, like, what are your final thoughts on it now that it's all finished and done with it? Um, I will say, after playing Zelda for 80 hours, going into Horizon Zero Dawn was really, really jarring. 
Right, I bet. Um, er everything, like the HUD, which actually makes why the HUD is so busy in Horizon. There's actually a, a story reason for that. Um, but like little things, like I couldn't climb the trees, I couldn't climb the mountains. It's <laughs> right, kind of yeah. invisible walls. You kind of have to like jump, kind of like, me like kind of mess with the physics of the game to like get anywhere. When in Zelda, you can go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And actually in the beginning, it was so jarring. I didn't really like it. Um, and just like controller things, like how to aim and the buttons that you use and, uh, you know, like the, the rolling and all that yeah. stuff. It was all different. But once I got over that, and it took like 10 hours because I played Zelda for so long. Um, yeah, I just, I completely got sucked into that game. Obviously, I mean, I, I platinum it. But uh, I will say, I think um, having played both of those games, beaten both of them, I will say it's unfortunate that everyone is so caught up in comparing these two games. Um, and I actually, I actually did compare them a lot before I played both of them. Yeah. And so I think I was wrong to do that, but having played both, I think it does both games a disservice to compare them because they are very, very different games. Um, more they different than they are to be similar. Open world, right? Yeah. And then it, it became a fight between like, the, the the 10 out of 10 put the target on Zelda's yeah back. I don't I don't yeah I don't understand that whole debate where it's like well Zelda got a 10 out of 10 so it's better than Horizon which only got a 9 out of 10 it's like really this is we're having this conversation <laughs> right now. like yeah. it's a 9 and a 10 out of 10 like they're both great games like if you've yeah. got if you've got someone to play both of these games on then buy them both that's the point of 10 out of 10s like this it'll you know? be it'll be really interesting to see um you know, like a lot of news outlets will do, uh, well, like when an HD remake comes out mm -hmm. or HD remaster, they'll do the comparison and like an updated review uh, to let you know how the games held up over the years. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how many Nintendo fans pick up Skyrim for the Switch. Yeah, that uh, will be interesting. Who haven't right? who haven't actually played that game yet, right? Because they've all they've got is a is a Wii U or a 3DS, and that's where they do like the majority of their gaming. Mm -hmm. And if they actually do pick up Skyrim, what the comparisons of that to Breath of the Wild will be like. Endless. It will be absolutely endless. Uh, yeah. Which is unfortunate because when Skyrim came out back in 2011, well, <laughs> it, right. was, it, it was actually... It was, that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was fantastic. And it still is. It still holds up. It's still an amazing game. But to compare that to a game that came out in 2017 will be a bit rough, and I don't think that'll be really fair. But I reckon that comparison will happen, like you say. I, I do think it's going to... It's bound to happen because yeah, it's on a Nintendo yeah, system at that point. But um, yeah, just going back to Horizon, I, I always want to say Event Horizon. Um, <laughs> great which, movie. Which Different is a great vibe. movie. And <laughs> the last movie that I was so scared that I slept on my parents' floor after I saw it. I think I was like 10 years old. I was going to say, um, so you went 21 or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I watched it last night and I couldn't sleep. Um <laughs> But no, a Horizon is a. I mean, everyone's been saying it. it's a it's a special game. It's uh, it's great. The story is one hundred percent satisfying, and it's so interesting. Yeah. Um, and I like. I actually like the change because Zelda lacks a story, but Zelda's about it, the environment the and exploring. Yeah. And the, the the story thread throughout Horizon is great, and I think the ending's satisfying. Um, it's just it's a really really special game, and I'm I'm excited to see what. Uh, what they do next. I will say though, fuck glint hawks. I hate <laughs> Amen. those Amen. fucking glint hawks. No, it's not. It's not the glint hawks. It's the um, the storm storm, storm birds. It, it, the storm bird is the hardest enemy in that game by far, by far. And, and I thought, like the first time I saw the thunder jaw or whatever it was, I was like, oh man, this is gonna be rough. And I took it down. It took about a good. It's about seven minutes or something. I was like, man, that was that was a great battle. And then when I came across a Stormbird, I was like, fuck this game. <laughs> you get, screw this yeah, game. Those things, those things will fuck you up. I think I've only killed one. I uh, just, I've, kill, I've killed a few of them now, but the first one was it was pretty heavy on me. I was because yeah. I just could not figure out like its weak points, and even when I did figure them out, it just didn't do that much damage to them. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a yeah. rough it's a rough one. But uh, yeah, great 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 games. And uh, there's one more game I've been playing, but I'm going to save that for uh our topic so Sweet. um vin how about yourself what have you been playing over the past couple weeks uh since the last episode i yeah i also platinumed uh horizon i uh, absolutely love the game uh, i think it's probably my game of the year thus far and i say thus far because fucking hell man 2017 is just ridiculous so far yeah. it's it's such a strong year 
Um, yeah, I'm absolutely in love with the game. Platinum and it. I had had a great time with it. But after that, I I thought, should I pick up Persona Five or should I look for my library and, and play something else? And I went against spending the sixty dollars on Persona Five and ended up being up the uh, Last of Us again. And I thought, hey, I'm going to try and get up the uh, platinum trophy on the Last of Us. So I went through that and I did grounded mode, did grounded mode in New Game Plus. I did all the trophies, but the only thing I'm I'm never probably going to get the platinum on that purely because the multiplayer is so screwed up and unbalanced. They've it just blows my mind that a company and such an amazing studio like Naughty Dog have, have put a um, a pay to win system into their multiplayer. Mm. It's just absolutely insane to me. Like Is I just even still playing it. I mean, and- yeah, like it, it's a really populated um, game mode as well, and it, it was really fun on the uh, PS3 when it first came out. Before any of the uh, DLC came out, and normally if it, if it's something that you can earn within the game, like over a time or something, if you if you're buying something to unlock it early, then you know go for gold, whatever. Like it, people haven't got time on their hands like other people have, so you know right. I, I totally get. If, if someone wants to unlock something early but in the last of us they've they've straight up got weapons which are more powerful have better f- rate of fire better range on them than the base weapons like the only way you can get them is if you pay money for them oh that's fucked up and yeah. it's like this is naughty dog and it feels dirty and it's disgusting and it's horrible <laughs> and well it's, I, I don't even I'm, think this would be an issue like we talked about this almost a year ago about platinum trophies like yep. multiplayer trophies should be separate from single player trophies yeah. why, why can't a game have two platinums what's mm-hmm. you know what's what's wrong with that i don't i don't see yeah, the definitely. see the problem but at least you got i mean you got two gold trophies for grounded and grounded plus i got it i got it that's a slow clap man that seems like a a pretty uh Gra- grounded mode was uh, it was actually pretty fun though but you have to it completely changes the dynamic of the game where Normally, you're running around in the game with a certain amount of bullets, and even though the game tries to promote the fact that you have to make every bullet count sort of thing, um, if you play a normal mode or even hard mode, you've still got a, a shitload of ammo by the end of the game, and you're not really, you're not really you know, worried about that sort of stuff. But in grounded mode, like literally, the game never drops bullets, ever. So you've got to learn how to kill everything with a brick or a stick, and that's it. Like... Even the bottles are pretty valuable in the game. Like if you, if you're running around, and you haven't got a brick on you. You feel really vulnerable. Even if you've got like a full clip of ammo, you're like, oh crap, I need a brick. <laughs> you know, it's it's really <laughs> it's really funny. But it completely changes the game, and yeah, I feel a lot better for it. So, a, just just go to the closest building and uh, take a take out, a right? take a brick out of the side of the building. What's the big if deal? only if only if only the game actually worked like that. <laughs> but, yeah. Do but, yeah, it um, yeah, it was a great game. I love it, but. Ultimately, I'm a bit disappointed by Naughty Dog and how they've handled their uh, multiplayer in the game, and not only with the the pay to win DLC stuff, but also just the fact that they've got trophies which are multiplayer. And it's not even like a short thing, like play play one game in in uh, supply raid or whatever. It isn't anything like that. It's you have to finish uh, twelve weeks of the game within the game to finish twelve weeks, quote unquote. You have to play <laughs> eighty seven eighty seven matches, and you have to do this twice. So you have to play like 160 oh games altogether um, to, to get the trophies. And I did one, I did the Hunter's Journey, and then I was going to do the Firefly Journey, but I got like seven games into it, and I was like, fuck this game. Because I'm just, like some games you just walk in, you get a whole team of people that have bought all the DLC weapons, and they just destroy you. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's nothing to do with skill. It's nothing to do with how good you are at the game. You just get rinsed, and it just it, the game is broken when you get people that have bought what they can buy and i just refuse to buy it because i'm against that sort of system so sure it's how the same long, go ahead how Matt. long is each uh, ult- uh how long is each multiplayer match usually a uh, match can last between five to ten minutes i would say depending on what game mode you're playing on but yeah it's a lot okay, of time so yeah i mean that's a, it's a long time man it's a it's a lot of time you have to put twice the time that you did for the single player into the multiplayer in order just to get how many trophies two <laughs> and I'm like, it's uh, like um, no, I'm done. And I got one of them, but I'm not going for the second one. I just refused to play it. And I even I tweeted out yesterday, and I was like, "Fuck this game!" You know, in in nicer words. Like, I love Naughty Dog. <laughs> uh, Dude, Last of yeah. Us is in my top ten games of all time. It's an amazing single player game, but the multiplayer is just 
broken beyond repair just for the pure fact that they put pay to win weapons in there and it's it's a total shame and I'm sort of disappointed in Naughty Dog for doing said two Tomb Raider's thing. trophies were like that it was yeah. um it's weird you know you had your single player stuff but in order to get the platinum it was multiplayer and it was like reach level 60 on multiplayer with it's like are you fucking kidding me yeah no I'm no not doing way that. Yeah, I tr- I tried it and I just got I got rocked like for like three matches and like I'm I'm not doing this. I I've when I first booted up factions the uh, multiplayer mode for a good, I think it was about fifteen matches in a row I lost and I didn't only lose I was at the bottom of the leaderboard in every single match, and I was like I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this and then I finally got over like a hump where I was breaking even but I'd never I'd never be at the top of the leaderboard every single game that I played it doesn't matter how good I got. Because if someone walked in with a, a DLC weapon, that was it. Like, there was nothing you could do about it. Because if you both run into the same room and you're both looking at each other and you've got a gun, they've got a gun, they've got the DLC gun, they will win every single time without fail. N- nothing to do with your skill level or anything. It's just down to the fact that their gun has got better stats on it. And it, it just, 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 just out of curiosity, how much would you have to spend on the DLC in order to? It's not even that much. Have a the uh, DLC weapons are seven dollars, and I refuse to pay that seven dollars. Not because it's expensive or anything like that, because it's not. It's it's six bucks, whatever. And if you're putting that much time into the game, it's fine. But I just refuse to promote that sort of uh, thing in a game. I think it should be illegal, to be honest. Like if that's, <laughs> I really do. Like if if there's ever laws like struck well, like up pay to win, right? digital, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like if someone can pay to completely destroy you in a game, like it's unfair to the people that have bought the base game. Like unless you can earn them. And I, right. I'm just totally against that in every single way. Sorry, just refuse to to pay for it. And and I bought the Last of Us twice. I bought it on the PS3 and I bought it on the PS4. I refuse to pay seven dollars for these four <laughs> fucking weapons that are destroying me. And I won't do it. So yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, it is a shame. Uh, but yeah, anyway, moving on. Uh, back off, Matt. What have you been playing on? Well, um, I feel kind of bad because uh, in the lead up to now, you know, they, we have all these great games that are out it's almost a bit like sensory overload but um just you know because of personal life and work and stuff um i've gone back to sort of my back catalog and some video game comfort food um I've been <laughs> playing... good way of it. yeah it is i mean you know so other than sonic spinball um i've been playing <laughs> final fantasy 7 uh the steam version of 4 uh, and a little bit of Rocket League when my nephew comes over. He oh, likes nice. to play Rocket League. So, so how yeah. are they holding up? Like, especially what you're playing six? Did you say six and seven? Uh, seven and four. Seven and four. Sorry. How how do they yeah. hold up? Seven. Uh, it's like I remembered it. Um, I just kind of want to get through it to see if I can get uh, all the achievements. So oh, that's I've right. Put... The Steam achievements. I forgot about that. Yeah, there are Steam achievements. Um. So I've put probably like 17 hours into uh, a playthrough right now, and I just left the gold saucer. Okay. So I'm I'm probably a little over leveled, but I like to do that in Final Fantasy games. Yeah, you're there for the uh, story, not the yeah, exactly. Not the so crazy like awesome to... re- like reactive gameplay that they've got going on in there. Yeah, um, so I've just been kind of leveling up in between uh, when I actually have time to sit down for like you know, three hours or so to, to push forward in the story. Um, I think it's interesting cause I just got past the point, um, where you find out about, uh, how Barrett got his, um, gun arm. Oh, is that oh, yeah. like and the, the jail section? Yes. Yes. You, you, you fight his friend. Yeah. Dine. Yeah. I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, and so that's really interesting cause I had totally forgot about that part of the story. Um, every this I was about to say this actually every single Final Fantasy that I go back and replay like being older now every single one even though if I think I remember absolutely everything from it there's always like a few scenes throughout the game which I've just totally forgotten about oh of course like I, I was 12 when great. I played FF7 like I bet even now going back there'd be things that like oh, for I sure, forgot man. or went just over whole my characters head or, and stuff, yeah. yeah it's like it, I totally last time I played Final Fantasy 7 was only a few years ago but I totally forgot about the scene where the dolphin flips you up onto like a fucking power pylon right. or some shit. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Uh, that's, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> you know, it's just I, I, I actually so don't weird. remember that. Yeah, it's a good thing. Like, there's a reason why your brain sort of ejected it out. It's like, yep, don't yeah. need that. 
It's gone. <laughs> uh, four has actually been pretty interesting too. I've only put maybe about two hours into that. But um, the last time that I played four was the Chronicles, Final Fantasy Chronicles for uh, PlayStation 1. Oh, uh, yeah. I think I've got that. Somewhere. Which was just the SNES version. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of disappointing because Cecil's not quite as much of a badass as I remember him yeah. uh, because of the voice actor that they have. Mm. But I'm sure that I would probably feel that way about Squall if they ever gave him a voice actor. Just like, you know, who is this whiny bitch? But <laughs> um, yeah. They, yeah, Matrix Software did a great job because um, I was able to pick up three and four in a pack. Um, and I think after I finish seven and four, I'll probably go through and play three. But yeah, they did an amazing job with the game, I think. In terms of the graphics and the way that it uh, does the cinematic scenes and stuff, it totally changes it up. Yeah, they were the um, they were originally on the 3DS, right? That's when they. Yeah, the DS. DS, actually. sorry, yeah, it was the DS. That's, Jesus. I played. Uh, I played the DS version of four. Actually, that was the only yeah, version I've ever played. Same. You have three, four. I think they made five as well, didn't they? No, they they no. made they three, make five, three did and they? four. Three and they four. They only made three yeah, and four. Just three and four. Five is the shitty iOS port with the fucked up. That's uh, right. The sprites. Same as six, which oh, makes man. no Same sense yeah. because six is one of the best ones. Have Ugh. they never remade that game to this day? It's, I don't, it's sort of amazing. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's pretty ripe to be. Um, even if they gave it the same treatment, you know, to put it on mobile and they had Matrix right. do it, I would be happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's uh, too bad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, speaking, speaking of remakes. <laughs> Speaking of remakes, yeah, do you want to kick us off with um, your first topic, Matt? And we will... Yeah, so I was kind of curious because of the fact that I've been playing Final Fantasy VII uh, again, um, just what you guys might think, uh, you know, what your hopes and dreams are in terms of the, the remake that they're going to do and sort of what we already know about it and um, uh, what we think would be good for them to do with the remake. So, uh, Vin, what do you what do you think? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a weird sort of situation because it's like Final Fantasy VII was so long ago now. It was literally twenty years ago. I think it's the twentieth anniversary this year. Actually. Oh yeah, right, ninety seven, right? Jesus, that's oh. that's weird. But yeah, it was uh, twenty years ago. So I don't. Know, I'm I'm more nervous about it than I am excited <laughs> in a weird way <laughs> because obviously it's going to have voice acting. It's going to have a completely different battle system. There's gonna there's going to be a lot of stuff that they'll have to put in the game to sort of update it as well. And there's a lot of like the dolphin thing that I was just talking about. Just, like that's not going to be in there, <laughs> is it? <laughs> and I mean, if it is, that'll be golden. But Jesus, that'd be really funny if it was. But yeah, I sort of wish. I sort of hope my. I don't know. Like the the main thing would be the combat, probably. I mean, I know uh, Tetsu Nomura is uh, doing the direction on the game. He did a really great job with uh, Kingdom Hearts and all that sort of combat. So I would hope that it sort of goes in that line. There's there's going to be a lot of purists out there that are going to be have mixed feelings about that, you know. But right. to have sort of an action adventure based combat system would probably be really cool for Seven. I don't know, that's, that's my main thing. But also just to see the game looking pretty again because Final Fantasy VII got really outdated really quick, unfortunately, like the way the graphics <laughs> looked. Like even yeah. in the PS1 era, if you compare Final Fantasy IX to Final Fantasy VII, it's leaps and bounds yeah. between them. Like Final Fantasy IX oh, actually totally. is still playable to this day, but Seven just looks like a big pile of polygons with pixelated <laughs> backgrounds, yeah. and it's like it's like Star, it's, it's it's like Star Fox for this Super NES. Exactly right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's sort of it's sort of rough. So really, like I just want the game to look pretty and to have a decent combat system, which I can get stuck in that loop, because that's the problem with a lot of Final Fantasy games these days, which I play. Like if I go back and play Final Fantasy IX, which is my second favorite game of all time, there are some moments where even with that combat where I'm like, yeah, just press an X. You know, I don't really want to do that anymore. I'm a bit older and I'm a bit wiser to video games and there's a lot more that they can do with combat. So I, I'd hope that they create something where I can get stuck in that loop properly again. So yeah, I'm excited. But how about you, Evan? Like what's, what are the main things on your list? Well, I guess you can't really say you want a uh, real time battle system because it's, it's not going to happen at this point at least from what we've seen right i mean i don't know if you'll have the option yeah um i would like turn based or turn based sorry real time real time yeah uh, atb <laughs> sorry active time battle okay. right thank yeah. you thank you um 
Oh, we, the emails we would have gotten. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe maybe it's somewhere in the middle, you know, like maybe it's not you're not like dodge rolling out of the way and, you know, also waiting for a meter to fill to to do an attack or use magic. Maybe it's something more like Nino Kuni where you are moving her on the battlefield and that does have to do with whether or not you're hit uh, by the enemy, but it's not about timing in terms of defense, mm. but you still have your ATB meter that you're waiting and uh, maybe it's more tactical and less ab- about the action. I would prefer that. If if you want to try to balance them out, I would. I hope they lean more towards ATB, but... I, I don't really mind if they put in, uh, you know, if you can move around the battlefield and that we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works. But um, as far as the story goes, I would actually be totally fine with them pretty much doing the exact same story. Now, I'm sure there are sections where they could, they're going to rewrite, they're going to keep the story beats, but they're probably going to rewrite some of the dialogue, I'm sure. Um I'm mostly curious about well, one, how they're going to release it, right? It's going to be episodic, and and how how they're going to roll that's, that stuff out. That's the part that makes me nervous more than anything. Is the episode? Yeah, I think it's weird. It's really weird, and it seems like what they've said is like they're going to make the section, the story beat sections, like they're going to expand them out. So if they're going to do that, then they're going to have to add stuff. So I'm just yeah. curious, like how they're going to do that. And um, okay, so Matt, I'll I'll ask you, like, are you what do you think about the story? Like, do you think, would you like to see think like character, de- new character development or story ex- expansion in sections of the game? Or would you be happy with like them just kind of hitting all the story beats from, from the original game? No. Yeah. I would definitely like to explore some of the stuff that just sort of gets glossed over. Like I was talking about, um, I totally forgot about the scene with dying and, um, it's actually, it's pretty, um, it's pretty dramatic when you're sitting there talking to him. Um, you know, spoiler warning: he jumps to his death after you after Barrett fights him, right? And he's just like in this huge, heavy depression because of Shinra, and he's you know stuck in this penal colony. And um, like it would it would be awesome to actually play the scene where we see Barrett getting his arm and Dine getting his arm blown off, right? You know. Um, but it's just like a kind of a quick little, um, non-playable, uh, not really a cinematic, but you know, where they have the, it's like a flashback or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, that would be interesting to play that. Um, I'll have to see if I can find, there's a video that somebody posted on YouTube. I guess the most recent footage for the, the remake was, um, uh, it was like some convention in Japan, right? Or... I'm not sure which was last. Uh, Fumi, oh, what was it? The one that Square Enix always goes. I know what you mean. I know what you're talking about. But yeah, yeah, I can't think. I can't think of it right now. But they were analyzing the footage and the screenshots um, that were released there, and it looks like they've actually added in a menu system for the combat. Right. So it could very well be that it's just an expanded cinematic camera. Mm. And it's still a turn-based or active time battle system. Right. Yeah, it'd be it's it's interesting because like you've got you've probably got fifty percent of the fan base that want the ATB system, and then you got the other fifty percent are like, no, I want to play something different. I, I, if I was just playing Violence Seven again, I'll just go and crack open the old version and just replay that because it's on every system as well, including the PS4 right now. I could download it and play that. So why would I just yeah. play with prettier graphics for sixty dollars or whatever? So, yeah, I'd, I'd be super curious to see what they do with which side they sort of lean against. I mean, I, I personally, because I'm, I'm definitely on the side of, hey, let's let's do something different, especially because now you've got the time to do it. But Yeah, yeah it's an opportunity it's, to make things better, right? Yeah, that's, that's the bad way to it, sort of it's a tight. That's a tightrope walk, though, you know? Yeah, I mean, because you could, you could really alienate your fans, but at the same time, you could bring in a lot a lot of new fans as well like yeah, people yeah. people because there's probably a lot of people out there that are, that know what Farm 7 is they know it's an amazing game they've been wanting to play it for years but every time they look at the original it's like minus 20 years old it's pretty rough around the edges i can't play that it, it just looks too outdated for me so they're waiting for that you know but at the same time are they gonna like boot this 
remake open it's going to be an active time battle and then i'm like ah, this is kind of boring like i don't want to play this it's 20 year old gameplay you know so it's it's just a lot of weird things that they got to juggle i guess well um evan you've been playing persona 5 too right um have you jumped back into that at all i have not jumped back into it only because it's so long and i'm just wondering i like what what was the point of me buying that game in november like i played for like five hours like everyone sixty dollars well spent right yeah sixty dollars well spent everyone has played the game more than i have and i i bought it like six months ago um well (laughs) the only reason i was bringing it up is because um it's a game in 2017 or 2016 uh, if you live in japan (laughs) that has it's it's a brand new game with a turn-based uh battle system oh yeah yeah. jrpg so it can work it totally works like i like the combat a lot um I mean, and it's getting rave reviews. So I think it could potentially work if Square leans on an active uh, time-based battle system and they do turn-based, then, you know, I mean, at least Persona 5 shows that it's 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 still appealing right. today. Sure, which very true. I don't, which I don't think that, you know, um, Bandai, Namco, you know, all the JRPGs that they put out are all um, action-based, right? Like the Tales of, uh, well, the Tales games, Tales of Zestiria, and the new one, the Basiria, or whatever it is, the, those are all action-based. And it's like, I don't think anybody else is really doing turn-based other than Atlas at this point. Sure. Yeah, and it's a good point. Like, everyone's kind of moved towards a more action-oriented battle system, so going back might actually make it feel fresh in a way. Um, right. Obviously, yeah, they're It's kind of ironic. Sh- yeah, it is. It's, it's weird. They're not strictly going to... I don't think they're strictly going to do it like the old school ATB system, but um, maybe they're trying to do something slightly new. Maybe they're um, they're they're gonna take that and just I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how it's they all do based it. off. Yeah, it's all based off because uh, who's directing this is Mr. Tetsuo Nomura, and he's done Kingdom Hearts, and he did uh, The World Ends with You. Um, he he worked on Final Fantasy 15 for the longest time, and that was all changed to a more active combat sort of situation because probably because right. of him because he was directing it as well now that he's finishing up kingdom hearts 3 at the same time that he's doing violent 7 remake it's sort of like how how could he of all people as a director switch to atb again you know it's so sort of like he's never made a game like that so why would he start right, now right. sort of thing on this really important i think remake? um isn't isn't yoshinora katase still Working on the game too. Uh, I believe they so. They have like yeah. everybody except for Sakaguchi and, and um, uh, Uematsu, right? Yeah, yeah. Uematsu. They've, they've, they've got basically the same core group of developers. Yep. So yeah, it'll be it'll be super interesting in that respect. But I'm not, I'm not too worried about it either way. The only thing that really worries me is the episodic content part of it. I do think, I think. Uh, I think the game is probably going to be cut down a lot more compared. I don't think it's going to be expanded on, to be honest. I think they'll probably cut out more stuff than they actually include in new because of that, you know, because they're rushing to meet deadlines to get each episode out sort of thing. Right. But I don't know. We'll probably, it's probably going to come out this year, though, right? Because it's the it's the 20th anniversary of the game, and I think it's Farm Auntie's 30, no, 30th anniversary okay. this year. And there's been rumors flying around that uh, Farm Anti, uh, Square Enix are actually going to be putting out a whole collection of Farm Anti 1 to Farm Anti 12 is going to be out on the PS4 this year. Like the, That would be awesome if they did there, that. Yeah. There's a lot of rumors flying around that. So, And, and at the same time, Episode 1 of Farm Anti 7 is going to be out this year, apparently. So that that leaked a few months ago. I'm not too sure if it's if anything more has come of that, but that would be, that'd be super cool if we got Farm Anti 1 to 12 altogether on on the uh the old ps4 well, I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd, shit i mean everything that i'm against with square enix at the minute because they're doing a lot of weird pr stuff but i, I i'd definitely buy into that collection especially man Final Fantasy 9 on ps4 please make it happen that, yeah that would be right. that would be great well how Definitely. do you guys feel about um do you think they're just going to do old school leveling like auto leveling or do you think they're going to try to do some weird like crystarium um, oh, keep sphere no, grid no sphere system. grid bullshit please no I, that'd I, be fucking horrible yeah exactly right <laughs> yeah keep, yeah uh, so just keep it level based just keep one it. of my favorite this guy uh the spoony one uh he's not really around that much anymore he's like a kind of a video game like youtube critic guy like from years and years yeah. ago but you know him matt 
Yeah. yeah I love his uh, – well, he's famous for his Final Fantasy takedown videos. Uh, Vin, actually, if you wanted to watch someone sh- shred Final Fantasy to pieces, look up yeah, the Spoony one, those. Final Fantasy videos. But I love how uh, when he talks about the Crystarium and the Sphere Grid, he says it's the illusion of choice. And he's right because – you're only going forward and every now and then there'll be a branch and there'll be like one, you know, one sphere to the right, but you're still going around down a linear path to upgrade Yeah, and you have to get everything along that line and there's no deviation. So what's the whole point? It's like, it's such a waste of time. Yeah. I um, hate the fucking sphere grid. Like I, it's, I know a lot of people praise it and stuff. So yeah, some definitely trying to tackle something that's like, no, it, it sucks. Like I hated it. I didn't like it. It's just, <laughs> that's just so it's, unnecessary. It's right. Yeah. It's unnecessary. That's the point. It's at the end of the game is someone's put like 200 hours in it. Like most hardcore Fantasy fans did back then because they had nothing else to play because games are a lot more for you in between. Um, or, or, or getting every, to level everyone, 99 in the Mako reactor. Yeah, exactly. The game. Oh, d- d- oh my God. <laughs> what yeah. a loser. What a loser. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Blew my fucking mind. I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah, well, but, it is, apparently. Yeah, getting but, yeah, level, like, leveling up to 99 in the Mako reactor is the new beating Final Fantasy 1 with four white mages. It's uh... Shoot me in the fucking face. <laughs> sorry, Final sorry, Vin, you were saying. One. No, but like, if, if you put that much time into it, everyone had the same loadout either way. So it yeah, didn't really make yeah. a difference. It was totally, it was totally pointless. So yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It it kind of makes sense in the context though, because ever since um, after five, right, um, every character represents a different type of class, so they just sort of f- fall into that role in the story and in combat. Right. Yeah. Um, so so it, it should just automatically. Yeah, up, it's yeah. just totally pick, just pick the skills that, for you. That's the point. Yeah. Like, if you give every single character the same set of things, regardless of where they start out on the sphere grid, then either way, everyone's going to have the same things at the end of the game. So it, it completely kills off their uniqueness. Like in Final Fantasy IX, the reason why everyone likes VV is because he's he's a, he's a badass black mage, and you see it in combat, and it's awesome. But if everyone's got black mage powers, then it's sort of oh. Like, what's the point of you, kid? Get out of here. Like, I like his character, but screw him. You know, there's just no point. So it's it's weird to do that, to give access to everyone else's abilities to all the characters. Uh, right. It's what so about weird, uh, the whole materia system? Like, do you think it's fine the way it is? Do you think it needs to be tweaked? Um. Well, I don't know. I mean, the materia system does give you some choice, right? And... If you're not spending an, an insane amount of time grinding, um, then you are picking and choosing the types of material that you want equipped to uh, the different characters. Right. You know. Um. So, yeah, I mean, it does give you a little bit of freedom. I think it it works, and it's kind of interesting once you get to um, a certain point in the game, you can actually and you have enough material that's built up and and leveled up. Um, it's almost like um, like macros. Like you can assign these materials um, to chain off of each other. So like I saw a video where the guy beats um, Emerald Weapon by using a set um, number of materia and the, like linking them together in a certain way that caused uh, Cloud to be able to just beat down Emerald Weapon in like two attacks or something. Right. Yeah, I always thought the materia system was... I mean, I think it's deep enough and it's it's complex enough up to a point that I don't even really know like how they would expand it. But it, I like I personally like liked it. I th- yeah. And it's been so long since I've actually played the game that I, going back to it might even feel new to me. You know. Yeah, as long as they, as long as they stick to the core beats of the game, I think it'll be fine. Like the the actual remake overall. The only thing that they've got to update is certain gameplay mechanics of. You know, they have to make the combat a bit more exciting compared to the ATB system a little bit. I think the material is fine. It's it's the the actual actions in between what you do with that material, which is probably needs tightening up. And I'm sure they will because they've, they've got to make the game not only accessible to new players, but also they've got to make sure that the game isn't boring to the people that have played Final Fantasy VII five times in the past. So they need to make it a bit different. That's a very good point, yeah. So, Dedicated uh, jump button, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe. Okay, maybe, maybe. But yeah, yeah um, we should uh, prob- probably move on uh, to our next topic. Uh, Evan, do you want to kick us off? What we've been? 
gonna talk about. Yeah, what this you is talk about? the uh, this is the hopes and dreams uh, podcast Literally. because uh, similar to Matt, uh, one game that I didn't mention before that I, I actually just beat yesterday was Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and for a little bit of context, I've only ever played two, three, four, and Syndicate. Okay. So I've never really gotten tired of the series because I, I wasn't playing it every year. Man, you um, played all the best ones, actually. Yeah, and <laughs> like I you, actually you missed none okay. of the crap. So maybe when you talk about Assassin's Creed and Assassin Cre- Assassin's Creed fans, you might want to gauge what kind of fan they are, and you say, "Did you like three or not?" I liked three personally. Um, one of the worst last boss battles ever, if you can even call it call it that. Uh, you just kind of like run after a guy, and constantly desynchronize until you figure out exactly how you're supposed to move through the burning building and then you win it's fucking awful but uh, i actually really really like the game and um man playing th- through syndicate like coming out of this podcast i was wondering how i was going to describe my time with this game or how i feel about it um i don't like syndicate much at all uh, I started turning a corner towards the end, but it was way too little too late. And um, playing it and hearing that everyone cu- like quite liked the game, and especially coming off of Black Flag, which I absolutely love. Um, I'm just, I'm a bit worried uh, about the direction of the series. And um, like, I just think it's, 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 it's unfortunate because Syndicate... Um, London in the 1860s looks amazing. Like the city itself is uh, is great, beautifully rendered city. Um, and the assassin missions, of which there are eight, are great. I think. Well, some of them are are, are good, but um, I don't know. Like, I'm playing this game. I think when did it come out? 2015. Yeah, it's a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm I'm playing this game and. Um, like the the parkouring stuff just feels old now. Um, they still haven't figured out the jank when you you're chasing someone and you accidentally latch on to uh, a building, or if you're trying to jump over a fence, you you should just jump over the fence. But just the way the mechanic works, it's like he magnetizes to the fence, and then I have to physically press a button for him to get over the fence, and then like I desynchronize because the guy's already, you know, he, yeah, he's, right. he's already left. It's like. There are other games that do stealth better than Assassin's Creed does it even in this game. And this game is only like a year and in, in some old, like the new Hitman game, um, D- Dishonored, was a way better balance between whether or not you wanted to stealth or just go balls out and, and kill everyone. It, it gave you both options and both options seemed viable. Where in this game, I'm like, I suck at this game. I constantly get caught and then I feel bad about it. Um, but then like once you're powerful enough, there is no incentive for you to stealth in an Assassin's Creed game. It doesn't make any sense. So like by the end of the game, I'm like, fuck this. I would just (laughs) run. I would run straight into the area with my gang and just completely decimate everyone. I was like, well, this is not really what I want out of the game. And I'm just kind of like, I don't really know. So that's why I wanted to, to discuss, uh, our hopes for the new AC game just because we're thinking that they might be announced this year, whether or not it comes out this year, we're not sure, but kind of like yes. what we're, what we, what, what we want to see from this game and what, what we liked about the series, what we think should be changed, all that type of thing. So I guess first, first question is what's, uh, I guess what's your favorite uh, Assassin's Creed game and like, why, like what parts about the game do you like? So uh, I guess I'll ask uh, uh, Vin, how about yourself? What, what, what's your favorite AC game? Uh, my favorite one by far is uh, Black Flag. Um, basically, the reason why I like it is probably everything apart from the assassin part of it. Uh, it's just the whole, the aesthetic of the game, the uh, the the naval battle stuff, like the naval combat stuff, is just absolutely fantastic, and it never gets old. Just going from it's just like behind the mechanics behind that game, it just blows my mind for when that game came out. It came out on the PS3 and the Xbox 360 at the time. Uh, and the PC, obviously, but the fact that you could go from being on your ship to having all these crew members singing crazy songs or what it like shanty songs, and then you seeing a boat on the horizon, go okay, I'm gonna go and attack that. You riding over to it, attacking it, like 
firing your side cannons on it, your broad cannons. Like the storm out comes sails. in, the waves get choppy. So, yeah, exactly right. So all this yeah. stuff's happening. And then like after you take out the boat, you swing onto their boat and you're attacking them and you and you kill the you kill the captain or you climb up to the top of the mast and you cut off the flag and the flag falls down and you claim the ship as your own. All that without a single loading screen in between is just absolutely astounding to me. And that's the sort of thing that I, I expected from like a generation leap, but we were able to do that last gen. And that always blew my mind. Just doing that over and over again, like it, it never got old. And then on top of that, you had all the, the different islands and stuff, and the story wasn't actually that bad in, in Black Flag as well, the main storyline. Uh, the side missions were sort of broken up by the naval combat stuff, so it, it didn't feel as arguous to everything else, you know. So right, just the whole right. game, it, it felt it felt good to play. And I think that's sort of been missing from Uni, and it was also missing from Syndicate. So that was definitely my favorite by far and that's the reason why but uh, how about you matt like what was your favorite assassin's creed well i've only played two okay um i guess i'll no, be I mean, it right I've only- assassin's creed two. <laughs> done uh, no no two. i've only <laughs> played i've only played two of the assassin's creed games oh, all right uh, i played the first one absolutely despise that game i hate it i can't stand <laughs> it's it boy. um and i was never gonna play another assassin's creed game but a friend of mine was like, dude, you like pirates, right? And I was like, well, yeah, I guess. He like doesn't pirates. like pirates. Come on. And he just kept hounding me until I was like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna buy four. I'll play Black Flag. Um, and so I, I, yeah, I got that one. I never actually beat it, but I probably dumped at least twenty or twenty five hours into it, nice. and probably got thirty percent of the way through the main story. Like I spent so much time raiding ships and chasing down sh- the the sea shanties and um, you know doing all that stuff. So yeah, I mean I th- I think that that's where the series needs to go from here. They need to get back to um, like you said the way that everything is broken up and the the activities that you do going from place to place. Mm-hmm. Um, it varies it up enough like even though it's the same freaking animation every time you take down a ship and right. claim it for your own. It still feels it's still good. Exciting. Yeah, it still feels good, though. Yeah, it's still exciting every time it happens. Like, yeah, I did it. I took over the ship. and um, I even got. I even started to get really into um, where you send your uh, other vessels. It was just like menu-based, where you send your vessels down the trading routes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was cool. I think there was an iOS game um, for it as well, and I, I got totally hooked into that. Like, I, I was actually doing what the PR people wanted me to do, pretty much, where they <laughs> said, oh, we want you to play the iOS game while you're on the bus on the way to work because you can't play the game at home sort of thing. That's exactly what I was doing. I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Attacking on my yeah, boat I mean, I, online, and it was great. I probably spent at least at least five hours out of the 25 to 30 hours I put you know, into that game they should, just doing they that. They should just yeah. make a game called Assassin's Creed Bowl. <laughs> yeah, right. Just boats. The naval combat was, you know, it's still some of the best. Like, there is no other game that does that. Yeah, yeah um, that's true. No, it was, why they abandoned it, I'm really confused. Yeah, it's weird because I went to the, um, when I was working at Ubisoft, I don't anymore, so I can actually talk about this, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, when I went over to us, the Singapore studio, because it was the Singapore studio that actually developed all of the naval combat stuff. And it was, it was, because that game was co-developed with like five studios or whatever and Singapore got the job of hey you make all the the naval combat so they worked on all that and I was meeting all the all the artists and all the programmers and all the designers like guys you you are the do you know you're the savior of Assassin's Creed sort of thing like you were the reasons why it's like yeah, oh yeah. we appreciate that but yeah they they need to get back to our sort of stuff I think yeah um yeah I'd say two is my favorite followed by four i guess and uh, like i'm not going to reiterate what you guys said but basically uh, pretty much everything you said vin and i think that's one part that was lacking in syndicate is there was nothing set apart from just kind of wandering around the city and doing the same fucking missions over and over and over like liberate liberate like these kids from working in a factory or yeah it feels like um, a troll after a while take 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 down a bunch of templar um go to this you know be like take this like this burrow back from back from the gang and and um actually the gangs in the game like when you so basically when you take over a burrow you can like recruit uh uh, g- uh gang members to your cause and um then you can like upgrade your gangs in in a bunch of ways like you can upgrade brutes you can upgrade snipers um 
they sh you can upgrade to the point where like they they show up more in the city like they they have the rooks uh drive around in, in carriages owned by your gang so like that stuff was all really cool but after a while it just became a chore and it was um pointless. yeah Almost. and i think that leads me to a, one thing that i want to see the series go back to is the story about the first civilization um so basically after assassin's creed 3 they've only like tangentially kind of referred to the story of desmond and the first civilization and and juno's role in the future of the fight between the templars and the assassins and like i love that stuff like i know it's cool to walk through a city um a historical city and like look at landmarks and then go into the database and read the history of the landmarks like all that I, stuff I, is really i was really gonna say I was going to say that's probably my favorite thing about Assassin's Creed is the fact that you can do that. Um, I learned a lot about London that I did not know. Right, exactly. Um, well, this is the thing. Like when I played Assassin's Creed Three, like as as divided as the community was about that, like all the fans and stuff. Um, I actually, after I played that game, I went and read like five books on the the American Revolution. And, uh, like I I now know more about the American Revolution than my American wife, which is sort of <laughs> ironic and funny. But you know, it sparks our interest, and I think that's what Assassin's Creed does really well. And it that's one thing that it should never deviate away from and I hope that it doesn't too much but yeah I totally agree I, I love how um the the two fry twins g g go to London and like within like 10 minutes I met like Marx Darwin that Dickens got ridiculous and yeah. so I was like I mean, you gotta Jesus. be fucking kidding me but but right. whatever like <laughs> um that game is janky where Sherlock as fuck comes, too where is it like I don't know I've been posting a lot of stuff on on Twitter <laughs> it, yeah. about stuff that's happened to me and like everyone's saying like I've never seen any of this this is how bad unity was for me like um the only thing that I can get around all the jankiness is like in a meta sense where you're basically in a in a simulation mm -hmm. of London so they're if there's like weird things happening or a natural um, <laughs> it's like a glitch in the matrix it, it's like a thing. glitch yeah they just haven't figured right. out the program so I can actually kind of get around that stuff but um uh they kind of hint at where the series might go with the first civilization stuff, right? In the present day. Um, yeah. I'm not really interested in the assassins in the present day. I think they're just kind of vanilla. I think that series, I think that's done though. Like it's been described, like you've got the history of the assassins. That's what all the other games are for. Like they yeah. don't need to explore that any further. So Right, right. Like we, yeah. If And if you don't know, you can you can go back and read all that stuff. Like, yeah, it's been covered. I want to see what happens with, with, uh, with Juno and the and the first civilization in, in 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 like you can you can go to Egypt or wherever the next Assassin's Creed is going to go, but I want them to to I know people don't really like controlling they didn't like controlling Desmond in the in the present day, but I want to know more about the first civilization and see where that story the story goes because I thought that was one of the most interesting parts aside from you know learning about uh, city. Um, in yeah. a historical sense, yeah. The, the neither of you guys have played uh, Far Cry Primal yet, have you? Uh, I've played, I have not. I've played a little, a little bit of it, a little bit of it. I own it. So, I played it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I haven't gotten that far in it yet. But um, I think we had this conversation one other time about the Ubiverse. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I've had this theory. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we didn't record it. Maybe it was you know um, so some pre show the yeah. podcast. Yeah, but um, so in Watch Dogs, there's the um, there's a guy that you kill who ends up being the CEO of the company that you're in in four in the present time. Okay. Yeah. And there's a it links together. So like in four, that you find out like oh he's leaving on a business trip, and so then you um, are able to make your way into his office to find out some other stuff, right? And then. In Watch Dogs, you end up killing him as part of one of the missions there, and like those two games are tied together. I would love to see uh, if like Takar and his civilization—I can't think of the name of the the tribe—is somehow linked to the first civilization. That'd be interesting as hell, actually. Yeah, that would be interesting. It would be interesting. Um, in terms of some like game mechanic stuff, like like I said, like games like the new Hitman or um, Dishonored. Like I think. They need to really re rework how some of the stealth stuff works because it's, For it, sure. it's yeah. not really – you can skirt around any stealth in that game. And there's no consequence. Like I've been caught 
I'm like killing the cops, just like murdering because I got caught and I'm not going to redo the mission. And then like the yeah. people, <laughs> like all the people around them, they're basically like a couple meters away. They didn't see it. But then there's no incentive because like in a game like Dishonored or even like um, Deus Ex, both of the Deus Ex games, you can go through those entire games without killing a single person. Or um, right. you there's trophies and there's check marks at the end of missions that say uh, you can ghost the level. Never seen and never killed a single person. And in Assassin's Creed, at least Syndicate, like it, it's, just, it's almost impossible to do that. And um, I think they really missed the mark on some of the Assassin... Um, missions in this game to where there's options to do stuff like okay like kidnap a guard and sneak through uh, to get into the building or I can climb the building and get in through a window yeah so it just kind of like I don't know there were some good parts of the of the assassins missions in syndicate but like look at hitman you're at ground level and it's like okay there are two guards in front of that door well he can't fucking scale the building um, so he has to find, you have to find a clever way to get into the building. And, um, I think with Dishonored, it works and it with Hitman where they've created these compartmentalized levels. It's not open world. Mm-hmm. So they've designed them right. as levels. And so it's just more interesting, but, but then, there's nothing stopping them doing that in an open world though, you know, where you're given them multiple options, how to infiltrate a building instead of just like in assassin's creed it's always usual sort of thing it's like oh there's two guards in front which you can try and stealth or there's another way wink wink and it's like yeah okay let me find the fucking window that i have to crawl through and it like takes like a minute to build. find it you it know? takes a minute and it, yeah, yeah. And there's no puzzle to it that that stuff definitely needs definitely needs a tweak but the main the main part of assassins that really does need to be tweaked is the engine itself obviously i think yeah like you just said you got the bugs that come from the game just being rushed which they are to be fair um there's like five different studios working on that series year in year out just churning them out because it's money at the end of the day it prints money for ubisoft it's one of their main ips but like just the core mechanics of traversal stuff which you've obviously spoken about which is really janky and to this day i still have never played an assassin's creed game where it's actually fluid and you know the characters move in the exact way that i want them to like the only reason why fall is probably so good is because hey i'm not actually scaling a building anymore i'm in a boat so it works <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's sort of ironic and funny but it's totally true but outside of that i think the main the main thing for me would be the side missions uh how they break that stuff up because the side quests of assassin's creed are fucking awfully bad well they're they're boring boring after the first time you do them. they're shopping list missions it's like okay go here it's like i've got to sit on this bench and listen to this dude by the way you have to do this 16 times throughout the game if you want to platinum it or whatever it's like no it's boring like i want memorable characters in the side quest and i'm not talking about random historical bombs that you just drop in like oh darwin wants you to find some pages it's like fuck off man come on give me a break yeah just playing (laughs) playing games like horizon where you meet these memorable characters that are just there saying oh this is my story can you help me with this and they're all different even if they are just in horizon basically all the side quests are go here kill these dinosaur robots and bring me back whatever they drop it's like yeah no problem like the that's fine but the way that they break that up is is really interesting and and actually pretty decent to how you want to play the game and it doesn't kill the flow of the game you never get actually bored of doing that because the combat's so great right and it's the so. same thing with uh the yakuza 6 where okay hear me out okay hear me out this <laughs> the, 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 the side missions in that game um are about the interesting people and like the crazy wacky situations you get yourself into and yeah. given at the end of the sub story you stomp someone's head on the curb but that is not the point of the the sub stories it's the interactions and the characters and the and all the stuff around the fighting and the fighting yeah. just becomes a, a, a small part of it yeah it's, yeah. it's it, it is like horizon zero dawn in that way and i wish yeah i wish they could incorporate that style somehow into into assassin's creed it would make for far interesting stories not just checklists yeah to, but to sort of close this thing out like what 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 would be the top of the very the very top of the list, uh, Matt? Like for you, what would be the number one thing which you always see in the series, which like that needs changing, which you want to see in the new one for you to be interested enough to pick it up at least. Well, I think um, I'll concur with the whole checklist mentality. I think it's going to be in there 
to some extent. Yeah, yeah. But if they're able to to figure out a way to break it up a little bit, um, that would be uh, that would be pretty that nice. would be a nice touch because, like with four, I never finished it. Uh, I I think the game's a great game, but I mean, I got to the point where it was just like, yeah, I set it down, and then six months went by, and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna trade this in. Like I'm not playing this anymore. Yeah. I have no interest to go back to the lists, and you know. So if they can break that up a little bit more, um, it's the it's the whole concept of uh, uh, ludo narrative dissonance, right? Where like the shit that you're doing has really no bearing on yeah. the the actual story and narrative that's that's taking place. Um, that's the one thing that I love about the Elder Scrolls games is like the the lore and everything is so tightly woven in to the stuff that you're actually doing. If they can find a way to, 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 to find that balance, then I'll pick it up and play it. And I'm excited to see Ancient Egypt. If it is Ancient Egypt. If it is, yeah. If it is. But how about you? <laughs> I think it will What's be. What's your top of the list? Uh, my top of the list is just the assassination missions. I just think they could learn a lot from games, like I said, Dishonored and Hitman, to where build an interesting... Design the levels cleverly enough and like give... give um, the player a lot of options um, that are very complex if you you know if you want it to be if you want to get that awesome kill right you have to yeah. do specific things in the level to to um, to complete it that way and I think there was a lot of parts in the assassination missions in syndicate that like I could see like clever design I'm like okay like this part of it is good and I just think mm-hmm. they would put a little more time into the level design and those assassination missions and I think Oh, and they need to fucking completely redo the combat. Like, the combat's terrible. I hate it. Um, yeah. So I'll figure that one out. But, uh, yeah, the assassination missions are, are, I think, what could make a game called Assassin's Creed shine. <laughs> so, right. yeah, Vin, how about yourself? What What do you think? Uh, I think the top of my list really is just overall uh, polish to the game loop itself. Like, okay. I don't want to. I don't want to ever get to the point where I'm bored doing the same thing over and over again so it, yeah i think it's the same as matt in this respect where they really need to figure out a way to with the writing mainly the writing and the the story itself to break it up to something meaningful where even if i am doing these repetitive actions at least dress it up in a way that isn't like you're you're not like skipping through it waiting for the okay i've got to chase this guy and like track him down without being seen across the rooftops because that's the most boring mission in human history and i'm and you're making me do it again all right skip yeah whatever okay let's right, go right right I, I don't want to do that. I want to meet. I want to meet random ass characters. That I've never that have nothing to do with the main story, but are integrated into the world enough that I believe in them and uh, like they're meaningful, and I actually want to like actually help them out with whatever their little problem is. You and know? yeah, and, see and their do, story through because it's interesting. Yeah, and do it. Do something intelligent with it. You know, like after playing Horizon, there's so much. There's so many different ways they could go with that with that sort of system you know like assassin's creed could really work in the, in the sense that horizon what horizon has done with a lot of their system so that's the main one for me i think all right cool yeah well, so fingers we crossed. see we see more of a uh, final fantasy 7 remake and uh, the new assassin's creed game in the next couple months or maybe we won't comes out. maybe we won't i i think we'll probably see some of both at E3. I would assume so. I, I would hope so. At least yeah. it's been it's been a couple yeah. of years for Assassin's Creed and yeah, Final or, Seven remake. For, or there's a leak. Yeah, the Final remake. Or there's a leak in a month before E3, and then a lot. That's yeah. exactly what happened with Battlefront too. Paul guys, <laughs> <laughs> I'll angrily I'll angrily tweet at Jason Schreier like everybody else does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all his fault. How dare yeah, you? Like this stuff <laughs> of course. Of course. Cool. So uh, coming up to the end of the podcast, just want to say a massive thank you to Berkoff. And Matt, thank you once again for joining us, man. It's been really cool to have you on. No, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we'll probably have you again pretty we'll probably have you on again pretty soon, I'm sure. So For sure. Yes. So we will we'll come back and, and give our first review on the Final Seven remake, I'm sure. That'll be yeah. interesting yeah. as well. Thoughts, E three thoughts. Yeah that too uh cool so if you do want to join us like Mark has today then you can just message me or evan uh evan's on sifted he's at the stand user i don't know why i say the at every single time because mm. that's not actually on sifted but if you do want to find us on twitter as well to ask us on there we are at uh podcast underscore reload you can find us on there just send us a message and let us know where you are in the world and what microphone you've got and we will get you on the show as soon as possible we're, we're a friendly group as it were of people and 
we always have a good time. We always have a massive pre-show as well to hang out. So please come and join us. It's always fun. What else? We haven't done this in three weeks. Oh, uh, it's been a while. just uh, Matt. Any any plugs? Twitter handles? Sign off. Oh yeah, that was it. Sure. Yeah. If you're unsifted, I'll plug my uh, drunk playthrough of uh, <laughs> Sonic Spinball. <laughs> well, the, my drunk playthrough of the first level because that's about as far as I could get. But uh, that's great. Yeah, and I'm on I'm on Twitter at Burkoff if you want to tweet at me. Uh, no, I think that's a, I'm usually pretty responsive. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go about those playthroughs because it's you're not going to do an entire playthrough of a game. It's just like, hey, here's the <laughs> first through level one. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean you can if you want, but I I doubt it, it's going to happen. But like, hey, like this is the first level. This is what I remember about it. A kid, uh, I beat it when I was a kid. I'm drunk now. Let's see if I can get through it and then move on to the next series. You know. So yeah, you should pretty, do you know what you should it. do? You should get drunk, find a game that you can get drunk in, and then play the game. So it's oh, like man. Inception level craziness happening. That'd be awesome. That's pretty good. There's actually <laughs> there's a there's an indie game called um, oh shit, what is it called? Drunk playing drunk. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I have a I have an achievement on my Steam profile. Um, you can drink too many beers or too much ale. And it kills your character, and it gives you an achievement for doing that. Um, Legend of Dungeon, I think, is what it's called. It's, it's an indie roguelike. Right. So. Legend of Dungeon, interesting. <laughs> Don't remember. Right. But uh, how about you, Evan? What is your? Uh, you can Twitter catch me at of- the stand user on Twitter, Giant Bomb and Sifted. And um, Matt and I are actually in talks of possibly doing a, a, a Let's Drunk play. Uh, oh, that'd be great! I'd, t- Teenage I'd Mutant Ninja Turtles Four, Turtles in Time for the Super Nintendo. We have to figure out the logistics and all that stuff, but I don't know. I'm interested. Uh, We both share a a love of drinking too much (laughs) and playing video games. (laughs) Right. So we'll see see where that that happens if if and when it does. And uh, Vin, how about yourself? Yep, uh, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Vin Hill Art. You can find me and some of my finger painters on there from time to time. Uh, I've actually been getting a weird bit of attention. Yeah, it blew up, man. I saw uh, on Facebook and uh, someone wrote an article about you. Yeah, I did a, uh, I did like a, a Last of Us two, uh, main menu screen, which is kind of funny because I was bitching about the game on this episode, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of ironic. Tough love, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, but yeah, I did the main menu screen of what would be the Last of Us two, and uh, the Last of Us actually retweeted it. Uh, they reposted it on Facebook, and then a couple of articles got written about it as well. So go check it out; it's a lot of fun. That's yeah, really but, cool. Uh, yeah. Other than that, just want to say a massive thank you for joining us once again on Podcast Reload. Thank you for listening to us, all three of you, and we appreciate all of our listening base, even if they are small. So, until next time, we'll catch you later. Ta-ta. Bye. Later, guys. Bye. Cool. This was uh this was an interesting conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um oh, so Vin, uh when you were gone um I, Matt and I were talking about his topics and we we're just trying to figure out like what do you think we would have the most to talk about collectively. I um, suggested it cuz he messaged me before. Well, he he's right here. Um Yeah. <laughs> he,